You can buy some weird things on the internet, but if you had to name one of the weirdest things, I have a feeling human bones might make the short list. Bones are a bigger deal than you might think, though, and that's according to science writer Brian Sweetek. He's the author of the new book Skeleton Keys, The Secret Life of Bone, and we had a chance to ask him about a thing called the red market. It's one of many bone-related subjects he tackles in the book, and here's what he told us. The red market refers to really, I think a uh, journalist, Scott Carney, came up with that name, and he um, you know, tracked us. It, it can be blood, it can be hair, it can be skin or muscle or organs, and including bone. And the red market trade in human bone is, you know, we, we might think that this is a, sort of a thing of the past, but it's really still going on today, particularly like places in China and India, like you may have seen stories about even exhibits like um, some of the ones where they're plastinated, you know, human bodies, um, that some of these were people who were, you know, prisoners who were executed in China who somehow found their way into um, this illegal trade. Uh, in India, many medical students are encouraged to get a real human skeleton to learn anatomy from, and that in part helps fuel this trade uh, where bodies can be stolen from where they're deposited after, after death and deflashed and then sold to medical students. Even on Instagram, you, if you know the right hashtags to follow, you can find um, human bones for sale. And um, <laughs> the, the sale of them might not be ethical, but in many cases it winds up being legal. And that's still something that we're uh, grappling with. Like, where what is the... Um, consent um, of a human skeleton. You know, if somebody didn't want to wind up as somebody's, you know, curio or on a mantelpiece or something like that, um, what do we owe that person in um, returning their remains or taking care of their remains? And that's something that is still being worked out. One of the ones that's recently been in the news, um, as recently, I think, as last summer, was uh, the case of uh, Charles Byrne, or someone at, at, in the late 18th century was known as the Irish Giant in England. So he had a physiological uh, disorder that you know, gave him a pretty impressive stature, and um, he knew, given his celebrity, that you know this was a great time of sort of body collecting and, and body snatching and bone stealing, you know, even amongst um, you know, medical professional surgeons, like people who wanted to understand how the body worked and wanted bodies to dissect to you know, teach students and things like that. And Byrne had a feeling that you know, after he passed away that someone would try and steal his body. And that's basically what happened, that um, the surgeon was able to kind of you know, Shanghai his remains. Byrne wanted to be buried in the bottom of the ocean in a lead coffin and you know, be left at peace, but his skeleton... Uh, up until recently, is still on display at the uh, Royal College of Surgeons in, in London, and um, there's murmurings that he might finally get his last wish. But it's just been this back and forth over years and years and years about you know Burns last wishes versus what doctors feel they can learn you know from his his skeleton and the historic now story that you know goes along with it. So this is stuff that you know it's not left just in the 19th century. This is you know continuing even now. It's been this sort of um, looter mentality that was left over from the 19th century that we're still untangling. Brian went on to say that bones have a dynamic and vibrant life, and that bone isn't just something you see after death that's dead tissue. It also tells you a lot about who we are and where we came from, and what we think about ourselves.